Hey everybody, it's Scott Galden from Simmons Floor Covering and Total Renovations. And I'm here today to give you seven key steps to make sure that you don't get ripped off by a contractor. The first step is to make sure that you get more than one reference for that particular contractor. A lot of times I hear from uh, people that have had problems with contractors and most of the time they simply got one reference from somebody and then they went with that reference. In a lot of cases, they went back to talk to that reference and found out later that the reference wasn't really all that satisfied with the work that was completed. So make sure that you get more than one reference uh, on every, for your project and make sure that that contractor has at least some proof that they've done a project similar to the one that you want them to do for you. Just because they painted a project well for somebody doesn't mean they should be doing tile in your home. Second thing is you should research their social media. Do they have a website? Do they have reviews on Google, Angie's List? Do they have uh, reviews on Yelp, Better Business Bureau? Take a look at all those uh, activities. The first thing you need to be aware of is if they don't have anything, they may not have satisfied customers anywhere. If they do have some negative reviews, just kind of get an idea of exactly what happened. Not every customer is easy to satisfy, but get an idea of do they have the ability to satisfy what it is I'm looking for. The third step is you should ask for a copy of their insurance. And you may be asking why exactly should I get make sure I'm using a contractor that has insurance? Let me give you just one example. Let's say that that contractor is putting in baseboard in your house. As they're shooting the baseboard nails, they accidentally hit a water pipe that's on the other side of the wall, something that nobody would have, would have expected. All of a sudden, water's leaking into your house. Who's going to pay for the repairs necessary? If the contractor doesn't have insurance, chances are they don't have the money in their bank account to fix it as well. So it's going to be left to you to fix it and your uh, homeowner's insurance. It's going to affect your homeowner's insurance and you're going to have to pay a deductible for it. So always, always, always use a contractor that has insurance. Fourth, you need to get an itemized estimate. Don't accept a lump sum estimate. Every estimate should have all of the items that you're looking for them to, to uh, include and a price next to it. Reason for this is as the project goes on, sometimes things change, you decide not to do this. If you decide not to do part of that project, how do you know what kind of credit you deserve from the project? So don't accept a contractor's lump sum bid. Make sure that it's an itemized and well-priced out estimate. Fifth, make sure that you have a written agreement. Um, too many times deals are done on a handshake and handshake deals end up with uh, misunderstandings. So make sure that you have a, a written agreement that outlines all the things that are included in the project. Six, don't get too far ahead on payments. A lot of times I hear from people, you know, we were getting close to the end, they asked for a final payment, I paid them, and then they didn't show up to finish the job. On larger projects, you need to expect that a contractor is going to have certain, um, certain, let's say, payment uh, time frames. Okay, they're going to expect maybe a third, a third, and a third, or 25%, uh, 50%, 75%. That needs to be agreed on before the project starts, and then you need to check with the contractor as to how far they are in the project. But don't get ahead of the completion of the project. And it's not uncustomary to hold back 10% at the end of the project once the project's completed, just to make sure that all the little things are completed, you know, what we refer to as punch items, little touch-ups before the final payment is expected. And the seventh, and this is the most important thing you can do to protect yourself, keep you from being ripped off, is pay with a credit card or some type of financing. In just about every case where I've talked with a client that's been ripped off, it's because they paid with cash or a check. Once that money left their hands, they had absolutely no way, they had no recourse whatsoever if something went wrong. If you pay with a credit card or financing, you have recourse. You have a bank or a credit institution behind you that can pull those funds back if you're not satisfied. So even though you may want to pay for it and not finance it, just use a credit card and then pay it off. Even if you pay it off, if there's a problem, that bank has the ability to go back if the contractor doesn't perform on the, on the uh, contract. So please keep these seven things in mind, especially the last one, and I can guarantee you that your risk will be almost zero.